As a college instructor, I really believe in the benefit of attending class. Yes, I take attendance. I only teach two days a week for a 15-week semester, so my attendance tracking sheet is going to look a little bit different. If you're in a similar situation, watch and see how easily you can set up an attendance tracking sheet in Excel. Okay, starting with a blank worksheet, I'm going to just start entering some basics. I'm going to enter the class that this is for. Spring semester. Now my class is capped at 24 students, so I'm going to go ahead and just add some numbering to 24, and I'm going to use my fill handle. Number one and two, select that range, use my fill handle, and just drag that down to 24. So I want to put in the student's first name, last name. Now because I teach a 15 week semester and I only teach twice a week, so this semester my class started on a Wednesday. I teach on Mondays and Wednesday. So the first day of my semester this week was a Wednesday. So I'm going to plug in 120 and I'm going to format this date here in a little bit. Now my next date is going to be for the following Monday. That's January 25th. So I'm simply going to put in my formula equal D4 plus 5. And that's going to give me January 25th. Now my next class is on Wednesday. So I'm going to start the formula again equal. This time I'll click on E4 plus 2. And that'll give me the 27th, which is Wednesday. Now all I have to do is select these two, the January 25th and 27th, use my fill handle, and I'll fill this going across. And notice it's putting in the correct dates, but I need to keep going all the way through to where my semester ends, which is May 10th. And you'll notice the little green triangles in the upper left-hand corner. That's basically just telling us that there is a formula inconsistency. And that's okay. I just want Excel to ignore that because I know it's correct. So I'm just going to select that range. And then my smart tag that pops up, click the drop-down arrow. And I'm going to tell it to ignore this error. Now, I do want to change the formatting of this date. So I'm going to select that range on my Home tab in the Number Grouping. Click the drop-down arrow. I don't want short date or long date, so I'm going to go to More Number Formats. And in my dialog box, choose Date for Category. And I just want the Month Slash Day takes up less room for the columns. Now I'm going to go ahead and auto fit these columns. So I'm going to select the columns in the column heading area, double click up in the column heading area, and that will auto fit each of these columns. Now for column A for my numbers, I'm going to go ahead and left align those numbers, and then I'm going to make that column width just a little smaller. I notice that the text in A1 and A2 does overlap that column, so that's not going to be a factor. In fact, I'm going to add a little bit of style to those right there on my Home tab under Cell Styles. I'm going to change this to Title. makes it look a little snazzier. I also like to have a column for Notes, and then my Attendance Total I want to total up present totals and absent totals. And we're going to come back and input those formulas in just a little bit. Right now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and add my borders. I'm just going to select the entire range. On my Home tab in the Font Grouping, I'm going to choose Borders and All Borders. Now we have a Spring Break and Spring Break the week of March 22nd. So these cells, March 22 and 24th, which is my Monday and Wednesday, I'm going to select those cells and apply 
just a grayish fill color, then I can easily see that this is my spring break. Now that I have my basic template set up, I'm going to go ahead and insert my student names. I sometimes import the names for my LMS, but sometimes I simply type the names in. So here I am a couple of weeks into the semester. You can see that I use an X for those students that are present, and I use an A for those students that are absent. So for those who were present, I'm using count if function, and I'm going to go ahead and use the dialog box so it's easier to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to count the range D5 through AI5 in this case, and the criteria is X. So I can see there were three days that this student was present. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to count the absent days. Again, I'll open up the dialog box. My range is going to be the same, and this time my criteria is A. And I can see that student was absent for two days. Now all I need to do is go ahead and use my fill handle to copy this formula down, or I could just simply copy. But in this case, I'm going to use my fill handle, select these two cells. My fill handle is in the lower right-hand corner. Place my cursor over it, click hold, and drag down. Now I'm going to auto-fit these two columns. My column heading area, double-click between the two columns. Just cleans it up, makes it look a little better. I'm going to go ahead and center that information. Now I also want to know how many students that I had each day. And since I'm a couple of weeks into the semester, pretty confident I'm not going to have any more students added to the class. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these extra rows that I have. I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to type in actual attendance. And again, I'm going to use the count function. I want to count all those who were present each day. Equal count if, double click, automatically gives me my open parentheses. Now this time I'm not going to use the dialog box because I'm familiar with this formula now. And my little tooltip tells, tells me exactly what my arguments are. So first I need the range. And that's going to be D5 through D22, comma, all arguments are sep separated by a comma. Now I'm putting in the criteria. I want to know those that are present, which I signify with an X. Because I'm not using the formula dialog box, I need to make sure that I actually put quotes around my text criteria. And I'm going to hit enter. That will automatically close my parentheses and end the formula. And I can see that I had 17 present that day. Now again, all I need to do is copy this formula across to where I want it. And I don't need it for my spring break day, so I'm just going to delete those two. Okay, so it looks like all my formulas are working. But I want to know, just at a quick glance, when a student was absent on what day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up conditional formatting. I'm going to go ahead and select this entire range for my dates. On my Home tab, under Styles, Conditional Formatting, Highlight Cells, Rules, Equal to, so if it's equal to A for absent, I'm going to go ahead and just use the default light red fill with dark red text. And you can see before I even hit OK that it's going to basically highlight those cells for me and make it easy to see which days that students were absent. Click OK. And let's just test this out. Now I'll come here to the, my next week and I'll just put in an A and my conditional format is working. So that's pretty cool. This notes column needs to be a little bit wider because once I start putting in notes, I don't want to have to wrap text too much. So I'm going to go ahead and widen this column a little bit. And I really don't need to see the entire semester right now when I'm just a couple of weeks into this. So if I want to, I can hide some of these columns. Makes my attendance sheet a little easier. 
So let's say from spring break to the end of the semester, I'm going to select these columns and I'm going to right click and I'm going to hide. I'm just hiding those columns. Makes it a little bit easier to read. And then as the semester goes along, I can choose to hide the weeks that have already passed or I could just display the whole thing. But I can go back and forth with this. So if, now if I want to unhide these columns, if I look up in my column heading area, here is column T, and then it goes to AJ. So I just select these two columns, right click, and unhide, and everything is back. Another nice thing about keeping your attendance sheet in Excel is if I have to leave a note for any of these students, I can click maybe this student, Barry Cade, on 2-1, he emailed me and told me why he was going to be absent. Now, I could put that in the notes, or I could just leave a comment on this day. So on my Review tab, New Comment, student emailed that he was sick. And now I can always go back and refer to that comment. One last thing to discuss before wrapping this up is printing. I'm going to go to File. Print. Let's take a look at that. Just a couple of things you might need to do because this is a pretty wide spreadsheet. So the first thing I'm going to do is change from portrait orientation to landscape. Then I'm going to go ahead and adjust my margins and pull those out because this whole thing is not going to fit on one eight and a half by 11 without some adjustments. So this icon right here turns on my margins. Now I'm just going to manually pull those out. And I can see right here I'm on page one of two. So let's see what page two looks like. Oh, I've got a long ways to go. So here's the quickest thing you can do to try to get this to fit on one page is I'm going to go to this very last option and change the scaling. And I'm going to say fit on one page. Let's see what that looks like. And it automatically shrinks the print out so that it'll fit on one page. Now this is for printing only. If I go back into my worksheet, it has not affected the font size whatsoever. So again, I'm going to go to File, Print. Now it's going to print on one eight and a half by 11. And really the only thing left to do is just to personalize it a little bit. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this video helpful. And please subscribe to my channel and be sure to watch a few of my other videos.